But you guys want to hear my reaction to the Dallas Cowboys because, of course, they are the most discussed and talked about team in professional sports. Now, what I got a kick out of watching that game, and I'm not a Cowboys fan. I'm a Dak Prescott fan. But what I got a kick out of watching that game is all that went wrong, right, especially the second half, blowing a 17-point lead and wind up losing the game in overtime. The defense gives up, let me check this, 510 yards of offense to the Jags. This is a defense that I have been told will carry the Cowboys you know, to, to the promised land as far as they want to go. They got to rely on the defense to get there. Okay, you talk about uh, offensive play calling. Well, suspect, but not awful. You talk about all these things that went wrong in the game. Clock management by Mike McCarthy yet again, late in the fourth quarter. And yet, who does the blame go on? As it always does. It went on Dak Prescott. This despite the fact that, uh, I mean, I don't know what more the guys to do. Puts up 34 points, completes 60, I'm sorry, 76% of his passes, three touchdowns, QBR of 72, which was top five in the NFL this weekend, and had a passer rating of 107. Not to mention, similar to the Green Bay game when he spotted his defense, which was supposed to be top five in the league, what I've been lectured about, spotted his defense a 14-point fourth quarter lead of which they could not hold. This case, he spotted his defense a 17-point second half lead of which they could not hold. Obviously, Dak had the two picks. One was absolutely his fault. No excuse. He's getting. He's, he's about to either get sacked, whatever. He shoots over Dalton Schultz's head. It's a bad throw. Can't make that pass. That was his only bad throw of the game. But watch the game start to finish. Watch Dak's tape. That's his only bad throw of the game. Like, name a quarterback in the league that doesn't... I don't care if it's Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes especially. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. They always, every quarterback makes at least one throw where you kind of, oh, you wince a little bit. You hold your breath like, oh gosh, they probably shouldn't have, th probably shouldn't have thrown that there. Every quarterback does that. And then the second pick, and I'm hearing so many people, it's unbelievable, talk about how it was a careless throw by Dak. Okay. So Noah Brown is in a little simple crossing pattern. It's third down and four around midfield. Dak sees the pressure coming from his eyesight. He's not coming from the blind side. He's coming from his eyesight. So he sees the pressure coming to his right, getting pressure off uh, uh, Tyron Smith, the right tackle. So Dak moves to his left and at the last second, lets the ball go to Noah Brown. C.D. Lamb on that play is covered and Dalton Schultz is covered. So he's like, you know what? Noah Brown's open. I'm going to throw it away from the area where the, other, the, the rest of the members of the secondary are. Hits Noah Brown right in the chest. He drops it, gets popped up, picked off for a touchdown by Jenkins to end the game. And yet it's Dak's fault. I'm going to go back to something that I said last year, around this time, week 17, when they lost the Arizona Cardinals, talking about the Dallas Cowboys. And I said at that time, what Dak Prescott has done with, I'm just going to go and say it, one of the worst offenses in the NFL personnel-wise, is remarkable. Now, I like Zeke and Pollard. You, you, you can have those, right? Zeke and Pollard have been a great running back tandem. But, you know, we talk about Dak's not doing enough. Or you got to, you know, if you pay a guy $40 million, if I, have a, if I had a dime for every time I heard that garbage, you got to be better. So the Cowboys are in the playoffs again for the second year in a row via the Washington loss last night. This despite the fact that out of, listen to this, 118 players in the NFL that have been targeted at least 38 times. We got this. This is, it, by the way, according to NFL Next Gen Stats. Out of 118 players in the NFL that have been targeted a minimum of 38 times, CeeDee Lamb ranks 60th in yards of separation. Dalton Schultz ranks 70th. In yards per separation per target. Michael Gallup ranks 103rd. Noah Brown ranks 108th. Again, 118 players, only 10 have separated less than Noah Brown. And only 15 have separated less than Michael Gallup. That's Dak's two and three receivers. Number two receiver, Michael Gallup. Number three, Noah Brown. Noah Brown, who is a sixth-round pick in 2016, is no more for being a blocking receiver than a pass-catching receiver. 
That's who Dak throw, who Dak's throwing to. Oh, by the way, that offensive line. Yeah, the Cowboys offensive line this season ranks last in the NFL in pass block win rate at 46%. So his offensive line is one of, if not the worst in football, with Biotish and McGovern and, and the rookie Tyler Smith who got abused yesterday with an old and injured Tyron Smith at right tackle. Zach Martin's the only one holding his end of the bargain. Zach Martin's still an elite player in this league. Probably still the best player in the Cowboys, to be honest with you. Yet and still, this season, Dak Prescott is first in the NFL in red zone completion percentage. He is third in the NFL in clean pocket completion percentage. Basically, when the pocket's clean, only two quarterbacks are more accurate than Dak Prescott. And you hear all the time, well, the completion percentage, that's because he's dinking and dacking. Is he? That's funny. He's fifth in deep ball accuracy rating. It's only four quarterbacks in football more accurate throwing down the field than Dak Prescott. It has gotten to a point where the quote-unquote Dak haters out there, there's nothing, there's nothing. Even winning a Super Bowl and winning Super Bowl MVP, there's nothing that he can do to change their minds. It's, it's, it's that simple. Some people have it in their heads that when they have an opinion of somebody, doesn't matter what happens, they refuse to change it. When new, even when new data presents itself, they're not going to change it. There's a lot of people out that like that out in the world. Dak Prescott haters being one of them. As I've always talked about, when you are talking about a guy who is consistently top 10 statistically in the NFL. He's top 10 in wins in the NFL. He once again has the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs with, like I mentioned, a below average is not even beginning to tell the story about this Cowboys offense. I mean, CeeDee Lamb has actually been playing pretty well the last few weeks. Uh, ever since the Green Bay first half, I think CeeDee Lamb's been excellent. Him and Dak seem to have built a, a nice rapport. But what did the Jaguars do yesterday? If you noticed... They just doubled him the rest of the game. CD had a big first half at 100 yards. They said, okay, Dak, you can't have CD Lamb. We're going to double him. We are going to beg Dalton Schultz, Noah Brown, and Michael Gallup to beat us. And they weren't capable of doing that. Dalton Schultz, again, was a, was a non-factor. Michael Gallup, non-factor, doesn't even begin to describe his afternoon. He had one catch for two yards. That was Dak's number two receiver. And Noah Brown, obviously, had the inexplicable drop to lose the game. In all honest, honesty, I can't say I'm that mad at Noah Brown. He's a guy. As the great Bill Parcells would say, he's a jag. Not, not like a, ja a jag, like a Jacksonville Jaguar, like the Cowboys played yesterday, but a jag. He's just a guy. He, he don't make those catches. If that were Devontae Adams who screwed that up, or Stephon Diggs, or Justin Jefferson, yeah, you got to make that catch. I'd be much harder than today. No, Brown's a guy. On a good team, he'd be a four, maybe a five. CD Lamb is starting to emerge as a one. So, listen, C CD's off. I got no issue with CD. Michael Gallup is a three at this stage of his career due to the injuries. He has no explosiveness. He can't separate, as evidenced by this. He is 103rd in separation in the NFL. And Dalton Schultz is... No better than a 10-yard ten, a ten completion on third and 15. Sorry. What Dak Prescott is pulling off, and, and people had the audacity last week to say that he was the weak link of the Dallas Cowboys. When what you're watching on television, or if you were at the game yesterday, what you're watching on film, and what the numbers are telling you, I'll say... The exact opposite. That if it were not for Rain Dakota Prescott, this team would not sniff the playoffs. This team dang sure wouldn't sniff 10 wins. Cowboys are in the playoffs. They win one more game. They're pretty much locked in as the five seed, and they will, in all likelihood, face Tampa Bay in the wild card round. And they will immediately be one and done. Not because Tampa's good. You see Tampa yesterday? See how they shot themselves in the foot in the second half against Cincinnati? How bad Brady was in the second half? But nobody is better at shooting themselves in the foot than the Dallas Cowboys. 
And so the reason I'm wearing this Dak jersey, jersey today and this Dak hat is to give a hats off for getting a bad offense to the playoffs yet again. It's remarkable. It's remarkable what this guy has pulled off with an offensive line that is 32nd in pass block win rating at 46%. With a receiver in Noah Brown, who's 108th in separation. Another receiver, Michael Gallup, who's 103rd in separation. And Dalton Schultz, who's 70th. His best receiver, CeeDee Lamb, is ranked 60th in the NFL in yards of separation. It's outstanding. Props to Dak Prescott on once again dragging the Dallas Cowboys to the playoffs. Um, <laughs> I, I just got a, a text from my dad. It makes a, a solid point. He said, I'd like to know when one of his receivers is going to stand up and say, hey, it's on me. Dak should, uh, sh- shouldn't have to always take the blame. And, and that's the thing. And, but, and listen, Dak has to, to take the blame for the interception. Like that's, that's the unfortunate part about being a franchise quarterback, especially being the quarterback of the Cowboys. You have to take the blame. Like that's that's why Zach Wilson got as much pushback as he did. A, because he pl- played awful against the Patriots in that game. But B, like, dude, that is not what you do as a franchise quarterback. That's why Baker Mayfield's gotten so much pushback. Cam Newton occasionally got pushback for that. Dak's everything you want in a franchise quarterback. He's consistently proven year in and year out that he's in that top 10 group. And yet, every game, we blame him, not his bad supporting cast. For losses. One last thing before we move on. What I got a kick out of. If you're watching that game down in Houston, Texas. A team that I think, personally, I've got them getting to the Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs. They needed overtime. Overtime. To beat the one-win Houston Texans. Very similar to how the Cowboys needed a 98-yard drive to beat the one-win Texans. But when Dak does it, oh, you beat the Texans by four. That's why you got to be kidding me. You should. When Mahomes beats the Texans, oh, did you see Mahomes yesterday? All oh, those crazy highlight throws. There's a double standard. Is Mahomes better than Dak? Obviously, he's better than Dak. Nobody's debating that. But the double standard is incredible to see. So props to the Jags. They, 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 they earned this one without a question. Trevor Lawrence was remarkable. Doug Peterson outcoached Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore for that matter. But the fact that game in and game out, we always blame the same guy, despite the fact that your eyes tell you and the numbers tell you is the only reason that they are even in these games. Once again, and I said it two years ago on this show, tw- 26 months ago on this show, I will say it again. Look in this camera. Dak Prescott, if there's any chance in the world that you are watching or listening to this, get out of Dallas as soon as you can. Once the season comes to an end with a first-round playoff exit at the hands of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, request a trade. The beauty of it is Jerry will probably listen to that trade. Jerry's never bought into Dak. As once again evidence last week, him taking shots at Dak in the media. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.